the last group ring in his orchestra chorus and our guests, George Burns and Gracie Allen. So keep on looking for a bluebird and listening for its song. Folks, this is Al Jolson of the Craft Music Hall. Well, for a while, I thought we were going to have a president with a mustache in the White House. And you know, they were so sure in Washington that at the Mint, they were already putting Tom Dewey's head on a penny. <laughs> but I guess the people didn't want a penny with fuzz on it. <laughs> well, sir, I got to laugh. I got to laugh. Dr. Gallup and Mr. Winchell must feel awful foolish. They kept saying that Dewey was a cinch. But if you happen to have heard this program last Thursday, I tipped you off with the winner would be five days ahead of the election when I sang, I'm just wild about Harry, you remember? <laughs> well, now I'm going to give you another tip. I'm going to sing a salute to what will be the 49th state in the union. Salute, Lou, salute. <laughs> Down Hawaii away by the moonlit bay. While I lingered a wild feast, stole my heart away. Yaka hula hickey doodle la. Yaka hula hickey doodle. Oh, I don't care if you got the latest far and near. You'll forget about them all if you could hear. Yaka hula hickey doodle la. Yaka hula hickey doodle. Coming back to you, my hula hoop. Decide to see that white you You're gonna play for me, and once again you'll sway my heart away with your yucca hula hickey doodle too. Big fun? How'd you like the election? Terrible, Ken. I had to change the whole show around. Oh. <laughs> but Oscar LeVan is certainly one happy guy. He knows that Truman won't get his job playing the piano for another four years. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, have you heard the, what Mr. Dewey's plans are now? Yes, Ken, I have. I, in fact, I had a long-distance call from Governor Dewey. Oh? Yeah, but I told him it was no use, no use. I do the singing on this program. <laughs> But honestly, Ken, I really don't know why I haven't heard from President Truman. Well, why? Did you expect to hear from him? Yes, I did. A couple of weeks ago, I got a note from him. It said, after election, Al, I want you to come to Washington as Secretary of the Treasury. P.S. Bring your own money. <laughs> Al. Yeah? You can never hold a position like that. What makes you think so, Oscar? Well, to be in the United States Cabinet, you have to be a specialist in something. Well, Oscar... I'm a specialist in something. I know, uh, but they don't have a secretary of marriage. Now, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Oscar. I've heard enough of that for the last 30 or 40 weeks. And for your information, I could have any cabinet post I want. I could even be the secretary of agriculture. If I knew how to milk a cow. <laughs> Al, surely you know how to milk a cow. Yeah, but sometimes I get a little confused. 
I don't know which is hot and which is cold. <laughs> well, uh, Al, if you could get a cabinet post, yeah? I suggest you become Secretary of Labor. Why? You'd have a lot of fun. Fun? What fun could a Secretary of Labor have? Once a year, you could run barefooted through John L. Lewis's eyebrows. <laughs> Well, tell you something. I say, look, if Mr. Dewey was elected, he would have put me in his cabinet because we're pretty good friends. Well, where did you ever know Mr. Dewey? Where did I know him? I was with him when he captured Manila. <laughs> ah, but it's all so disappointing. I was so sure I was going to get into politics this year, doggone it. Well, yeah. You are too sincere and too honest to be in politics. You should remain the great entertainer that you are. You would not be a good politician because you are too frank, too open, and too kind-hearted. Copies of this speech may be obtained by writing directly to the author. Oscar, look. Take your smarty pants and put them on the piano stool, will you? And play your Rachmaninoff. Second piano concerto. you suggestion that's a money saver. Plan at least one meal every week around a main dish that's rich with golden cheese. That gives your menus a change that the folks will appreciate. It can save you real money for the price of cheese is down. 
And it's a wise idea because cheese is an excellent protein food, a fine main dish food. Actually, ounce for ounce, there's no other basic food that matches cheese for high-quality, complete protein for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. So tomorrow, get one of the smooth-melting Kraft pasteurized processed varieties, Kraft American or Old English, or get K-brand natural cheddar, which also cooks fine. Save money by serving grand main dishes made with nutritious cheese. Did you notice in the paper that in my new picture, Barbara Hale is going to play Mrs. Uh, Jolson? They do pile up, don't they? I <laughs> feel uh, there's entirely too much kidding about that. You're always giving the impression that I've been in love a lot of times. Well, I've heard you've been on your knees proposing so many times, you've got housemaid's knees. <laughs> it just happens, I said, that my housemaid has very cute knees. <laughs> Al. Yeah. I notice you always talk about your pictures. You never asked me about mine. You know I'm in the movies, too, and incidentally, in my pictures, they use my face. <laughs> they wouldn't dare look for another like that. <laughs> but after I did go to your last picture. Which one? Kiss the blood off my piano. <laughs> My latest picture is the Barclays of Broadway, in which I do another one of those great love scenes where I don't get the girl. Oscar, you never get the girl. Maybe there's something wrong with your technique. Tell me, what's the scene all about? Well, I'm alone with Ginger Rogers. That's bad. <laughs> she looks beautiful. Yeah. Her eyes look deeply into mine. Mm -hmm. My arms are around her. Yeah. She leans toward me with a sigh. Then what? Then what? Then I sit down and play the saber dance. Doctor, how can you play the piano with ginger rodders in your arms? Strong fingers. <laughs> well, you just caress that keyboard there and let the old master show you how to handle a romantic situation. Remember, those are some notes I left out of the number I played. <laughs> Not many artists would be yeah. that humble, you know. I know. <laughs> Neither you am I. played those notes and left out the number. <laughs> now, will you excuse me, Oscar, please? I dreamed I dwelled in a marble hall. What are the rates there? Oscar, please, don't talk while I'm singing. You know, it isn't every day you can hear Al Jolson sing. I hope they don't change that. <laughs> Oscar, if that's the way you feel about it, you can pack up your piano and go. Oh, Mr. Bring? Yeah. <laughs> nice writing. <laughs> there was an idea. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bring, will you join me, please? Al, Al, yeah. Al. Please don't leave me out. I, I know that sometimes I unintentionally blurt out something nasty that I laid awake the night before thinking up. <laughs> but I want to play for you more than anything. Please, Al, please. Oscar, dry your tears. My feet are getting wet. <laughs> Go ahead and play, Oscar. Play. <laughs> My 
my darling. The other day, we started quarreling. Oh, I went away, but now I wish that I was back. I love my baby. Indeed I do. Oh, and who knows, maybe she loves me too. But that just maybe, and that won't do. No, that worries me. Someone else may be there while I'm gone. In my dreams I see a couple spooning on the lawn. That very thought just keeps me worried. I lay awake till the break of the dawn. I must hurry back, or someone else may be there while I'm gone. <laughs> to me, George Burns. This is your big chance. While we're here in the craft music hall, I want you to show off your voice. But, Gracie, it wouldn't be nice for me to sing. After all, it's, it's Al Jolson's program. George, there's only one thing that kept you from being a successful singer like Jolson. What was that? You, you didn't want to spoil the crease in the knees of your pants. <laughs> yeah, that's always held me back. I'm, uh, I'm too neat. Well, yes. tonight be sloppy and sing. I can't insult a close friend. Why, Al and I often go out to the club and get marinated from the same herring. George, you're going to sing or my name isn't Dorothy McGregor. Your name isn't Dorothy McGregor. Then you're going to sing. Let me see, has it ever, ever occurred to you that maybe Al wouldn't let me sing? Oh, I'll take care of that. I'll speak to the head man himself. Oh, Mr. Levant. Let see, Mr. Levant is not the head man. Oh, why not? He's got a head. <laughs> Hello, Gracie. Hello, George. Uh, Mr. Levant, let's not beat around the bush. Why do you say that? Well, you look like you've been beaten around the bush. <laughs> Let's not bother Oscar. You keep out of this, George. This concerns you. <laughs> I should have stuck to my dancing act. Uh, Mr. Levant, uh, don't you think that George sings better than Al Jolson? Yes. How can you say that? Well, after working with Jolson as long as I have, it's easy to say. <laughs> uh, Mr. Levant, I want George to sing on this program. Well, the only way to do that is to stop Jolson from singing. And that isn't easy. He's long-winded. <laughs> Have you got any ideas how we could stop him? Well, I've considered many ways, but I dropped them on the advice of my attorney. <laughs> well, I think we, uh, if we work together on this, uh, we can have George running the music hall. Gracie, we happen to have our own program. We'd combine them. Uh, we could take the Kraft Swiss cheese and fill the holes with Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> I don't know where's the brains in your family, but you ought to get them back. Oh, that's sweet. Now, why don't you ever say nice things to me? I'm working on something. 
Listen, Gracie, let's give up the idea of me singing. You wouldn't have a chance anyway. When Jolson sees you, he'll say, Hello, George. Hello, Gracie. Huh. Sit down and <laughs> I'll sing you a half a dozen songs. <laughs> oh, Al is not like that. Yes, he is. The second thing he'll say will be, I know you want to hear me sing because <laughs> I'm the world's greatest entertainer. <laughs> but Al's not that kind of a guy. Here he comes. Hello, George. Hello, Gracie. Sit down, I'll sing you half a dozen songs. <laughs> Okay, Al. I know you want to hear me sing because <laughs> I'm the world's greatest entertainer. <laughs> See, I told you he'd brag. That's enough out of you, Oscar. Go sit down. I'm tired of the way you talk to me. If I had your money, I wouldn't work with you. <laughs> People ought to think twice before they give their kids piano lessons. Oh, now's your chance for the throat. Go ahead and sing. Chrissy, I can't do it. George, are you a man or a mouse? I'm a mouse. <laughs> then squeak through the song. George, do you really want to sing? About 30 songs. Well, you, you've, got, you've just got to hear him. George is very sincere when he sings. You've heard Nelson Eddie sing short and bread? Oh, sure. Well, when George sings it, you can actually smell it. <laughs> George, why, why does Gracie want you to be a singer? Does she think that sometime to make a picture of your life? Hmm? They might have that. If uh, you could ever get through with Larry Parks. <laughs> George, you don't need Larry Parks. I could play you in a picture. You play me? Yes, who'd know the difference? We're married. <laughs> Why don't you stop kidding? You can't sing, George. Well, of course, I don't have a voice like yours, Al. It's a different type of voice. Yeah. Younger. <laughs> Look, this, this whole thing would just take a minute. Mr. Jolson, you sit down and listen to George. Now, I promise you that you'll have shivers running up and down your spine. I have them now. It's Gracie in here. Look, Gracie, if George is such a good singer, why isn't he singing on your program? <laughs> oh, you're cute. <laughs> Listen, George, we've been friends a long time. Why, our friendship started way back on that day many years ago when you held me on your knee. <laughs> I held you on my knee? Well, there may be a little, uh, that's the position there. Just... <laughs> Anyway, George, you know, I think a lot of you, and I admit you've got a good voice, a very good voice, but something happens to it as it passes your tonsil. <laughs> George, he's just trying to talk you out of singing. He's jealous. Jealous? Hmm. Name one singer that's better than I am. Dick Haynes, Polly Como, Jack Smith, Finn Crosby. I told you, just one. <laughs> George, whether Jolson lets you or not, go ahead and sing. But, Gracie, it isn't cricket. George, I'm not asking you to rub your legs together. Just sing. <laughs> Okay. From time to time in every climb, blessings come from above. Come on, man. Let me hear that last note again. Your blessings come from above. Let me hear that again, will From time to time in every climb, blessings come from above. This guy's got it, you know. <laughs> He's the nearest thing to Peggy Lee I've heard in years. Don't mind it, just come on, bend that note again. Keep going, will you? From time to time and every climb, blessings come oh, from a great voice, but that's not the right song from, you know. Look, do you mind if I if I just No, go right ahead, George. Keep from singing, George. Time to time and every climb, blessings come from a like you know. Well, like this, you know. Put on your old gray bonnet with the blue ribbons on it, and we'll hear the old Dobbin to the shade. The fields of clover will ride up to Dover on our golden wedding day. Oh, Joe, you are wonderful. From time to time and every time, blessings come from above. Joe, we haven't got time. Joe, we haven't got time. Your food store has a real bargain waiting for you, a bargain in nutrition. 
It's cheese. Cheese prices have come down. And cheese is a protein food, a main dish food. Actually, ounce for ounce, no other basic food matches cheese for high-quality, complete protein, for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. So for lower-cost main dishes that the whole family will enjoy, cook with cheese. Kraft's pasteurized process varieties are smooth melting, perfect for casserole dishes. Grand, too, for golden good toasted cheese sandwiches. Tomorrow, get medium mellow Kraft American or sharp Old English. They're extra savings if you buy the big, economical two-pound loaf. Be sure to get the genuine Kraft American or Old English, because you can depend on Kraft for quality. Love is a difficult thing to measure, but here Irving Berlin attempts to do so with a beautiful song. How much do I love you? I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high the sky? Do I think of you? How many roses are sprinkled with dew? How far would I travel to be where you are? How far is the journey from here to a star? Much would I cry? How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? I cry. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? And that's next week, George Jessel. Good night, everybody. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.